What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? It's Ring Bean. So a while back, I'm sure many of you will remember, I made a video talking about getting rid of majority of my NES collection. I wanted to focus on other things in the game room. I just simply didn't have the room, and there were other goals that I wanted to finish. After that video, one of my subscribers made a video talking about similar things, and it just kind of like jumped from YouTuber to YouTuber. Next thing you know, the game chasers uh, are making a video talking about getting rid of some of their game collecting. I'm not saying I had anything to do with that, but it does seem to be a going trend with a lot of collectors right now. That's what I want to talk about in this video. I want to talk about is this bubble popping? Is it deflating? Are you going to wake up tomorrow and realize that all the games that you had that you put money into are simply not going to be worth anything? What prices are going down? What prices are going up? Is this bad for resellers? Is this bad for collectors? Uh, we're going to talk about all the ins and outs of that. Also, at the end of the video, I got a couple packages that came in that we will open up and see what we got. I got some trades and maybe one or two items that I need to work on. So without further ado, sit back and relax. Let's talk about it. Like I said, um, you know, a while back, I'm sure many of you know that I sold off majority of my NES collection, and the reason for it was there was there's a handful of reasons. Simply, I did not have the room. A lot of people know my game room; they know that it's about packed to the kills with as much as I can put. So, in order for me to add, really add anything that I want, I got to take something away, and the NES was just kind of the first thing that I thought of. I have love for the NES. I kept a hundred to maybe 150 games, games that are nostalgic to me, games that I know are awesome that I will play that I will continue to play and that I just could never see myself parting with. Now I already know that this video is going to strike a nerve with both sides. It's going to strike a nerve with resellers and collectors. The collectors are going to be upset because if you look at a game in the monetary value sense, you're you're upsetting them. I'm a collector, understand that. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. Like I I said in one video before, there's all different types of collectors, but the bottom line is these games cost money. That's the simple fact of it. And it's most likely going to piss off the reseller side of things when I start talking about how it's going to be harder for them to find the deals that they once were able to do and make as much profit as they once were. And I always want to make mention whenever I do videos like this because it always seems a little controversial whenever you talk about money and video games together. You have to be an idiot to believe that I paid out of pocket for everything that I have in my game room. There's no possible way. I took a lot of inspiration from CJR earlier on. If you see his game room, it's it's amazing. He's got a very wonderful game room, completely paid for from yard sales, buying, and, and flipping. That's just a simple way of doing things. And, of course, you'll have the crowd that will argue that trading is a lot better. It, it doesn't you know, add that monetary value, but in all actual fact, it does. I mean, you trade for the same monetary value that you know, sites like eBay are selling for. So it's all the same. It all works out in the end, but I do like to throw that out there. So what have I noticed with the retro bubble, as everybody likes to call it? I always think that's the funniest thing. Uh, is it popping? In my honest opinion, no. It's It could be deflating, absolutely. I mean, there is a, a trending down in popularity with retro gaming collecting that I have seen, uh, especially with prices. You know, as a lot of people know, I am a full-time reseller. I sell games daily so i i notice fluctuations in prices and they haven't really been fluctuating up uh there could be a whole lot of variables to that there could be the variable of it just being summertime the summer slowdown it affects a lot of people i would expect a lot of things to start rising you know towards the end of september around those sort of dates i think when people think of the retro gaming bubble popping they just think they're going to wake up tomorrow and it's just going to be like the stock market crashed where they they hop online and they look on ebay and the cheapest Mega Man X3 is is like 40 bucks or something. That's that's not going to happen overnight. It's 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 a pretty damn impossible, I think, for that to happen. And sure, I mean anything's possible. I believe what Einstein said it's it, the probability of walking through a brick wall is very low. But if it's probable, it's possible. Well, I don't know. I'm probably talking out of my ass, but still, you can understand what I'm saying. But is the bubble deflating? And in my opinion, it's definitely not inflating. It's, I don't. See the popularity where it was once before. I see a lot of lost interest with a lot of people. I see a lot of old head collectors out there, you know, just completely selling off their collection. For me, I simply couldn't do that. I couldn't. I couldn't sell anything. 
I can definitely reorganize. I can I can change some things. I can focus differently on my collecting goals, which a lot of you know out there I have. But when I see so many collectors out there, uh, people who who started up so late in the game, they started you know maybe last year. All of a sudden, they're the next day they're they're auctioning everything they have off. Um, they're not keeping anything. Everybody's resorting to the emulators or you know like hacking their SNESs. I don't have a problem with that. If that's what you want to do, by all means go for it. It doesn't really affect me at all. So with that rise in emulators and you know the ROM machines, the SNES Classic, you got the NES Classic, uh, the Turbo Mini, the Sega Mini coming out. It's people are are turning to that. They know that they can hack those easier. They they probably hop on eBay and they're like, yeah, I want to get a Super Nintendo, a big bundle of games, and then they look at it and they're like. That SNES Classic looks pretty good right now, even though if the price is inflated or deflated on there at that time, they're just looking a lot better than what that probably does. It's just more economical for them. To be a collector, I think, takes it takes a lot of heart. I mean, you just, it's, people who collect, I, I think they do it mainly just for that nostalgia feeling. Uh, for me, that that's a lot of what it is. I grew up, we didn't grow up with a lot of money, so, you know, to have all this now, and growing up, I didn't have any of this. I mean, we grew up on the rental system head down to like, you know, pick a flick video and rent a game for the week. And if we liked it, we rented it again and we might get a game or two for uh, Christmases or birthdays, things like that. I always loved when people would say, you know, you're wasting your money on this hobby and not, I mean, not really at all. That's, that's, that's a dumb thing to say. Like I told you in the beginning, it, the game room doesn't cost anything. It's all something that's made me money. I was able to put this back into my pocket and then more into my pocket if you understand how the side of flipping works collecting to me is completely harmless i know a lot of people you know always reference it to hoarding which i can agree with i mean my game room's packed uh it's organized i mean it's nice you don't see stuff like caving in on it on itself at least not anymore i mean there's always been times where things have gotten a little out of hand but i always try to take care of it a lot of people will say uh you know people are selling off their collections because they have wives that are making them where they have uh, kids and that while those could be decent reasons of uh, not so much the wife thing i mean my wife loves that i have video games uh, she loves that i have my hobby she knows it keeps me uh in line from doing stupid things outside of the house i think the biggest draw to why my wife loves my collecting hobby so much is if i go out yard selling and i spend 500 dollars on a lot I'm going to get more than that back. I'm going to be adding stuff to my game room. That money's going to be right back into the bank account. And then more on top of that. She's always respected the hustle side of things to how I built my game room. And I know there could be husbands out there, people who collect out there. They just they pay pure retail. And if that's the case and you're building a game room like this, that's you're crossing the line. You might want to be careful on that. So there's so many things that can make people want to get out of retro gaming. They just lose the, the inspiration for it. They lose the drive to want to keep hunting. Uh, they may not even play the games much anymore. I, I know so many collectors out there that, that don't really play their, their game room. I know when I come in here, I make my vlog episodes, you know, you'll see the, the floor is dirty. There's games all over the place. It's because I like to play these games. I like to come in here at least once every other day if I can, maybe schedule an hour or so. Play some retro games if I can and enjoy them. I mean, it's not the easiest thing. A lot of people think collectors, is, they play these games nonstop all day and that could be further from the truth. I would love to. I try to make time too, and I try to enjoy these as much as I can. So what have I noticed being a full-time reseller when it comes to prices for games? Uh, and that's a lot of things are going down, things that you would not expect and things that I expected to happen. A lot of people don't realize Atari collecting used to be really big. It used to be very popular. People were paying you know, crazy prices that you would think are crazy uh, for Atari games, and now Atari games aren't really worth anything at all. Um, and then that hype went down dramatically and then it just kind of switched over to nes games and that's where we are now nes games are i ain't gonna say plummeting in price but they have went down dramatically there used to be a time when i could get uh forty dollars forty five dollars for contra you know back when it was in its peak and that's you know that was what the market was paying at the time and now you'd be lucky to get 30 bucks for it same with uh super mario 3 i, I know a lot of game stores they'll still try to charge 25 30 bucks for it but on eBay, you're lucky to get 12 or $15 for it. When you move up the generation, when you go to the Super Nintendo and 64, PlayStation, all that stuff seems to be plateauing. It doesn't seem to be going really down as much. I do notice some, some GameCube games going up, original Xbox. Some titles are going up. Um, I think people are becoming more selective uh, versus you're, you're not having these everything collectors out there who just have to have it you know, regardless of the game. So they're being real selective on good titles. 
So you'll see a lot of later system game, you know, 64, PlayStation 1, Xbox, uh, anything, you know, Super Nintendo and up. You're going to see um, the market get real selective, I think. You're going to see popular titles hold a value, if not climb, while the, you know, uncommon, terrible games, while may have been pricey before, start to go down, which I have noticed. So is it good for collectors? Absolutely. You're going to be able to get games cheaper. Uh, for the most part, I'm sure there's going to be people who are sticklers at yard sales and flea markets be like, you know, these games sell for quite a bit. You know, they had them for three yard sales now, you know, three years in a row, and they haven't sold because they're wanting, you know, $10 for Super Mario Brothers 3, which, you know, to some people that's a good good price. Some people it's a terrible price. Um, it, it's, it's going to be great for collectors in the sense that obviously you're going to be able to get games a lot cheaper. Is it bad for resellers? Absolutely. It's, I mean, if, if you buy games and you flip them for a profit, you're losing a lot of that profit. Not only that, if you weren't going to stay current on prices, you're going to be losing out. And there was a time when I could pay upwards of $10 for a copy of Super Mario Brothers 3. I, I've referenced that game a lot just because, you know, a lot of people have that price in their head. They, they're current with it. Um, and now I can barely find, I could barely pay five dollars for it's got to be like good condition just because I know that the profit margin is going to be terrible by the time I actually sell it um and that's what you got to keep in mind while you're still going to be able to resell these older games you, you just have to stay current on the market that's how it was with Atari a lot of people you know they always forget that at, at one point you had to know what Atari games were worth picking up and now it doesn't even really matter there's only like maybe five that I would look out for uh for the most part that you can commonly see. Uh, it's, it's doing the same thing with NES right now. A lot of people are kind of freaking out. They're saying, man, these prices have gone down so bad uh, and they're just selling off everything like crazy. One of the good things for collectors and resellers um, is if, you, if you're current on your games, if you're current on pricing for everything, you're gonna see a lot of people lotting things up. They're trying to sell everything as lost. They're not trying to nickel and dime every item. They just wanna get it gone. Uh, some people, who are in, into collecting for investment only. They're, they're like, oh my God, my, my, my stock ticket is, is crashing. Let me just get it gone. You could probably get some huge lots for very cheap. I have recently um, due to the same reason, which is, which is nice for, like I said, both collectors and resellers. But I really wouldn't let any of that scare you into thinking tomorrow you're going to wake up and your game's going to be completely worthless. Now, I know a lot of people out there are going to be like, you know what, if the games are worth nothing, I still am going to keep them to collect them. I support you 100% on that. Uh, but like I said, this was a hobby of mine that that I have paid for through collecting, through buying and selling. So, if, you know, when it gets to the point to where it's costing me money to have something like this, that's when it starts to seem like, you know, like a crazy hobby to have. I love the fact that it hasn't cost me anything, that, that, that it's a free collection. Um, but if it does get to the point to where next thing you know, my collection that was free cost me $10,000, you best believe I'm probably going to trim it down as best as I can. But that I don't see happening for so long. I it just, by that time, I'm sure that my collection, my collecting goals will have like been concreted into one type of style to, to a certain amount of games for each system that I feel happy with. You know, there'll be a few sets that I've completed and I'll feel that my, collecting goals are accomplished because that's really what collecting is it has to be about goals I, like i said you have your everything collectors you have selective collectors you have people that only collect the weirdest shit that you can think of uh but goals are important if you can finish them great if you can't make sure you're protecting yourself in the long run but anyways guys that's it that's kind of all i got for this video i know it's just kind of me rambling talking uh just giving you my two cents on my opinion on all this i get a lot of questions about it all the time what the market's doing is this bubble popping and hopefully this video shines some light on you. The bubble's not popping. It may be deflating to a certain extent. Uh, but in my honest opinion, it's just kind of moving from generation to generation, which it has done before. So with that said, let's go ahead and open up some of these packages that came in and see what we got and finish this video out. All right, so let's go ahead and open these up. Uh, try to be a little quick about it. I know this video kind of uh, rambled on a little bit. But, you know, when I, when I talk about things that I'm passionate about, this is kind of how it goes. Uh, so this first package here is from a Mr. Jonathan and uh that's actually my name believe it or not that's my real name and he actually spelled it correctly a lot of people don't spell it right i know there's two different ways to spell it but i like to consider mine and his the right way all right he's got a note what up Arene bean i'm sending you in these game gears to be fixed i talked to you about possibly fixing two of them but have included all three that i have because one of them is badly corroded uh you may be able to use it if anything it's good on it um but i'm not worried if i don't get that one back I have included, oh he, oh, he did include capacitors. 
uh, for one. Um, I actually had to order some parts, so I, I probably can just get started on that one. Uh, I told you about that and a glass one that came with one of the Game Gears. I guess that someone attempted to start uh, replacing the caps but gave up. I hope that you can get two of them working, but if not, then I'm hoping for at least one uh, that is, uh, we'll, we'll get you fixed up. I have no use for it and have nothing invested in it. Thanks, Mr. Perk. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely get started on that. Um, I forgot all about you saying that you had good, good packaging material, by the way. Uh, this is the stuff that you want. <laughs> it's free. Oh yeah, he's got that. I know this exact capacitor kit. This one's like, they sell it for like 12 bucks or something on eBay. Kind of high, but it does include all the, uh, yeah, he's got three, three game gears in here. I'm not going to pull them all out. You guys know what a Game Gear looks at uh, looks like. Um, it'd be cool if we can get all three up and running. Uh, with Game Gears, Game Gears are weird. I don't pay a lot for them at a yard sale. You would, I would be very, um, it would be very surprising for me to pay $5 for a Game Gear at a yard sale uh, without it turning on and me actually looking at it. If a Game Gear doesn't turn on, uh, it's corroded up in the battery you know, compartment, things like that, I'll... Pff, I'll give you a buck for it. They're, they're so problematic is the problem. Um, they can be very easily uh, non-fixable. I guess I'm, trying, I'm kind of rambling. All right, so next one up is through our first uh, gold member that we had on my Discord server. And if you have not joined the Discord server, my God, we're almost at 1,000 people. You can buy, sell, trade. People on there are going through mad amounts of trading and selling. And I traded with him. He's going for a complete NES set through nothing but trades, which is awesome. And I know going doing a video like this and, and talking about something like this, like why are you, why is he trading? Why is why are you trading for things instead of selling? Because I'm a collector. I love to collect things. He likes collecting. He's going for his goal. Just because the prices may be dropping on something doesn't mean it affects him, um, and it doesn't mean it affects me in the way that I want to collect. So you're always going to see me collect and add things to my game room, and I was very happy that he was able to do this. I can't remember what I traded for him. I know I traded a complete box duck hunt, ex except I think it was missing the manual, and um, maybe some unlicensed, I want to say some unlicensed game, my memory is terrible, he's a very good guy though, uh, oh go retro go, alright, let's see if we can open this up here, oh yeah man, I, I love when my memory is terrible because it always surprises me whenever I get a trade in. Uh, this does not have the game, by the way. This is just the box and the manual for uh, Kirby's Dreamland. Um, night Nightmare in Dreamland. I'm trying to look at this on the camera. Uh, box is very nice. I, I have this game. Huge Kirby fan. That is awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, another game for my N64 set, which I am getting so close to completing. Hydra Thunder right there. Very cool. Uh, the next box over here. Oh, that Kirby's Dream looks good, too. Oh, yeah, this is cool. This is the N64 expansion box right here. That box is amazing. I collect weird things like this. Since I am going for the N64 set, why not collect things like this? Uh, so that is awesome. Go, Retro Go. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that trade, buddy. All right, so next up is a package from someone that you will probably recognize, which is Tatic Collector and... Um, I can't remember the full story on this. I believe he found this and he was going to put a battery in it or something. Um, it didn't work, so he's just going to send it off to the Video Game Brothers. Uh, but luckily, I believe Phil found one, and lucky for me, he sent it my way, which is good. Uh, so I'm going to show you what it is. <laughs> it says, Dear Mr. Fuckhead, <laughs> I had intention on replacing fixing it for King Phil, but $5, uh, five, $5, but so here's a project for... Uh, is this folded? Is this why I can't read this correctly? All right, I had intention on replacing the screen on this and fixing it for King Phil, but he recently found one for five dollars. So here's a project for you uh, for a video screen needs replacing and needs a new battery. Hope it works uh, out and you can get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, like a man, <laughs> Tatic Collector. Oh uh, man, I can't really show you the pictures that uh, he's included. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's all right. Uh, he's a trip. All right, let me see. Let me show you what it is. This I've never found one of these in the wild, not for a good price. I definitely do not mind fixing it up if I can. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing here if I can get it open. Let's see. There it is, too. Ladies and gentlemen, my first ever PSP. Or 
PlayStation Vita, I'm so used to not having one of these. Uh, it's always been about PlayStation uh, P uh, play PSPs. Oh, those joysticks do feel weird. Oh, I was, I was asking, I was like, what do those joysticks even feel like? Uh, screen definitely needs replacing, uh, which I can do. I can throw a screen on it. Probably a new, I'll probably just get, see if I can't do a whole new housing swap on it. Uh, definitely going to um, have to try to fix that up for sure. But thank you, buddy. I actually sent him something recently. He was talking about how he wanted uh, Mylon Secret Castle for the um, NES. And since I was getting rid of some of my stuff, I sent that his way. Uh, so thank you, sir. If you guys ain't checked this channel out, check it out. Um, all right, this next pickup is another trade. This was a big trade that I did with one of my buddies. Uh, he didn't write his name on here, but I know his name. So if he didn't write his name, I probably shouldn't say it. Um, but he's a good guy. I've, I dealt with him at the convention. Um, I don't know if I've traded with him outside of the convention or bought from him. I've dealt with him a handful of times. I can't remember anything about it. Uh, but anyways, I know about this trade, and he, he got a bunch of stuff from me. I'm talking a bunch of NES games. Um, nothing crazy, you know, just a lot of stuff he wanted to add to his collection as I drop things over here. Uh, let's see, alright. First up, and I feel it in there, and I told you it did not need to be in there. Uh, this is, oh man, that box, he ain't lying, that box has seen better days. He put it, he put it in there. This was supposed to be the box in the manual for Castlevania, uh, Super Castlevania 4 for the, uh, Super Nintendo. Um, this box, look at that box, that box is faded. Uh, but I don't mind that, I didn't have it, so I mean, of course, if I find it in the future, I can upgrade it. And the game's in there, I don't know, he said, cause it took him a while to send some things out, he's like, man, I'm gonna throw some extra things in there. Uh, since it took so long, he didn't have to do that. I didn't ask him to do that. Um, I'll ask him again about that game because that's that's a lot of extra to be throwing in. Uh, oh man, I can already see some PSP movies that I like. Oh my god, The Labyrinth? Are you kidding me? This is an excellent movie right here. Whenever Hoggle pisses into the into the pond at the beginning, oh Hoggle! <laughs> he was. A, <laughs> I love that movie, man. That's classic. This is, I can't remember. All right, then we got uh, I Robot Will Smith right here. That's actually. Never been open. I actually do collect uh, PSP movies, UMDs, uh, Kiss of the Dragon. Oh my god, I just saw one that's awesome that I did not have. Oh, and this is great. 28 Days Later. This is Have you never, like, if it's never been storming outside, your power goes out, and you've watched a PSP movie with some headphones, it's not a bad experience at all. Uh, that's cool. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I forgot I got Sega uh, Master System games in this trade. You guys are going to be like, what the hell? Uh, all right, we got the we got the Cave very cool. House of the Dead. Is that the movie? That has to be the movie. Yeah. House of the Dead, UMD, Fantastic Four, <laughs> DMX, Never Die Alone. The dog comes out. Alright, more UMD. Oh my god, people are getting rid of uh, all their UMDs. I like collecting them. I think they're amazing. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo, There's Something About Mary and the Famous Hair Scene. <laughs> And then Hot Shot Golf Open Tee. Uh, very cool. God almighty, that's a bunch of... Uh, a handful of them. Alright, let's see here. Sega Master System Games. We got... This one is in the worst shape of them all. Four games. Very cool. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. Casino Games. Very cool. We got... Oh, this is cool. Alex... Kid, a high tech world. Like I said, I traded a bunch of NES games. It wasn't like five, you know, it was like a big ass box. Uh, we got columns. So those are Master System games that I didn't have a system that I'm definitely collecting for. Uh, and then we got N64 games. And again, the games are in. I told his ass the boxes is all I needed. Uh, I think some of these, they sound like they have the game in there. I, I'm knowing him, knowing his ass, he puts the game in there. He did too. Uh, Madden 2011. I just needed the boxes and the manuals for these, not the games, uh, which I told him about. And actually, not all these have them. This one doesn't, which is fine. NFL quarterback 98 featuring the man, the myth, the legend, Brett Favre. Uh, we got, I can't ever pronounce this, y, YLA Country Golf, uh, Country Golf Club. Very cool. And people were like, that's not cool at all. But yeah, but I got so many boxes and 64 games. It's fun collecting for them. Uh, and then down here in the bottom, the final few that we have are, I don't even remember asking for that one. Was it in there? Twisted Edge, which I know I, I don't have the box, I don't think, I can't remember asking for it. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. And these are all flattened, which are fine as shit. Once I box them and put them in a thing, they'll look just fine. And, of course, WrestleMania 2000. And last but not least, which one's very cool, is Excite Bike 64. And I don't think that's... I think that's it. Steven, you had to send anything extra to me. I told you it was completely fine, but he is a very generous person. And I'm happy to add anything to his collection. So to everybody out there that sent something in, whether it's for work or that we did a trade, I appreciate it. And to everybody out there who watched this video, especially to the end, I appreciate you watching. So to everybody out there, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.